feel this meeting. Can you please join me in rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which is standing, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Hi, good evening. Andy Morrow from the DH Joint Engineers. Uh, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, with me also tonight uh, from State Manufacturing Homes is Jake Smith and uh, Tina Smith. Um, Brian did a good job of introducing that. I'm just going to touch on a few brief things. Um, we were here in January of 2018, uh, got an approval from the board. At the time, it was an expansion of roughly 5,500 square feet. Um, the applicants uh, did not build the expansion within the six month uh, window, which is why we're back here before you. Uh, they've kind of scaled back the project. We're looking at roughly 3,000 square feet, exactly uh, 3,027 square feet is what we're currently looking at for an addition. Um, we were before the planning board on March 18th and did receive a positive advisory opinion from the, from the planning board. Um, why the expansion? Uh, when, when this was originally uh, built in 1992, there were 165 units in the Hillcrest community. There's currently approved, I believe, 335 units, so the current facility is just not quite big enough. Um, so all other, really all other aspects of the expansion are very similar to what we proposed before, other than reducing the size by roughly 45%. Um, the applicants are aware that they need to go to the planning board for a site plan approval uh, if the zoning board were to move forward with this. Um, is that uh, if the board moves this forward this evening, uh, we could look at going to the planning board at uh, the April 29th meeting. Uh, the applicants are anxious to get this construction started in the spring if, if possible. So, with that, I'll throw it back to the board and happy to answer any questions you may have.
will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, this structure is, is pretty limited to how close it is to some of the structures. You can see some of the existing homes to the, the left there up on the screen, but to the right of the screen is, is mostly wooded in that immediate area. Uh, there's really no impact to the uh, abutting residences. Are you, if you're located in the shoreland zone? Not, not located in the shoreland zone. Gee, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes, the applicants own this parcel of land, yes. H, the applicant has the financial and technical ability to meet the standards of the section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Yes, the applicants meet that requirement. I, the proposed use would be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, this is a community center in a residential neighborhood. I think the, uh, like I said, the events planned for this facility are certainly not late at night uh, events. Um, so I don't think that's an issue. Welcome. Does the board have any questions? I have one question. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be here last year, but this um, or last January. But it's my understanding that the proposed expansion is a reduction in square footage. Uh, has it shifted at all from the last submission on the site, or is it in the same location? Uh, it is. The configuration of it has shifted slightly. The original expansion. Um, didn't have that kind of small, smaller section up connecting to the existing building. And it actually curled around to the back of the existing building and went all the way up to the wetlands. So um, to the right, if you will, of the existing building is pretty much the same. The old expansion went to the back of the existing building. Thank you. You're welcome. financial reasons. We, uh, the applicants started looking at the cost of the original uh, expansion and, and for those reasons decided to kind of scale it back. Right. Yeah. Well, if the board doesn't have any other questions, I'm going to open this up to the public. Building is, is going to be used for the new building. Okay. 
question I follow up to the basket with the question. Isn't that a planning board uh, issue? Bathrooms is going to be a building code. It's a permit. Building it's code. A okay, issue. so it's a permitting issue. Okay. okay. So it's not really something we should be discussing. Your focus is going to be on those seven criteria. Yeah, so that's right. That's what we're going to do. All in favor of A being met. It's B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. So I'll, I'll start. Yeah. Uh, I just want to reiter reiterate that uh, there is a bus system in this community and it, it's available to all residents in the community who would like transportation there, and that's provided at, to all events that occur there. Um, so there really isn't any vehicular traffic, of, you know, personal cars that go there that you know, to speak of uh, a few. So there's really no need for additional parking. If anybody had any concerns about that. Seeing that this will be a community center temporary option. Occupied temporarily during different periods of the day. Do not see any concerns with parking. It should stay exactly the way it is now. I'm sure all those 335 people are going to the same place. It might be smaller, so the same traffic pattern in and out. All right. I'm moving forward, and I can establish that most of this, this is being used by residents who reside there. They're walking there, or there is a shuttle available to. All in favor of B being met? C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. See, if no one mentioned they're going to meet all those uh, main state fire marshal standards for all right, again, they already have a community center there that's fully operational and they're just going to be expanding on it. I do not see this creating a more of a problem. So all in favor of C being met? That's cool. D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supply. I would uh, say that based on what we've heard from the engineer, uh, they're putting uh, uh, restraints in the effect that would prevent the you know, water erosion. So I, don't, I think they're handling that well. Based on the new proposed design, it uh, sounds as if the square footage and location of the addition has been moved back from the existing property line and so no concerns. Um, I think what they, they're talking about, fact, they're talking about adverse effect on water supplies is drinking water. If 
located in the shoreline zone. We've established that this property is not in the shoreline zone. All in favor of it not being the shoreline zone. There we go. Uh, G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. No comment. The proposed building is in addition to the existing, and um, as such, they not only have sufficient rent title based on the plot, they also have the ability to continue forward with the use of the building. section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. I agree. No comment. They do, they do. They've represented tonight that they have the financial ability and I think that they've admitted that, you know, they maybe went a little too big at first and so I think I agree that they've proven that. It's all in favor of H being that. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. This wouldn't change anything in terms of hours of operation. We stated that there will be uh, limits to how late the building is occupied and perhaps the patio will also be seasonal. side 
it, it again falls into that miscellaneous appeal category where you're expanding that non-conforming use in a residential two district. Um, that store for as long as I can remember or go back into the files and records to find it's always been a commercial establishment there. So it's long-standing, legally non-conforming existing use now wanting to expand. Part of the problem with expanding, unlike the, the, the prior applicant, is there's a very limited amount of parking area with the restaurant. And so when you expand your sit-down table service, those tables have to meet our uh, on-site parking requirements, so many parking spaces per uh, number of seats and so on. And so uh, I think that the applicant is going to demonstrate to you that she's addressing that. That's certainly something the planning board is going to look at should um, the, the Board of Appeals approve the expansion of this use. Then the planning department will look at in greater detail at the parking as well as other other aspects of the commercial use. Um, so that's kind of where we're at is just to try to find out if an expansion of that use can meet the uh, miscellaneous, or excuse me, the uh, special exception criteria. Um, it's the same as, as what you just went through with the, the prior application. Okay. I feel like I should disclose. I've heard the pine point girl a lot. I've sat on the patio before, so I just wanted to disclose that to the board so they're aware, neither here nor there. Please go ahead. Um, and in full disclosure, we did close on the business. Paul Landry is the new owner. Um, because it is a seasonal business, he wants to get do a few changes to the to the business, so they want to get up, running, and rolling. So um, we went ahead and closed yesterday. I told him I would go through the process and try and, and get it through. We did go to the planning board on Monday night, and I think they sent their comments over to you folks. Um, and as Brian stated, we have 16 parking spots. The outdoor patio is, um, you know, seasonal use, and the five tables. It does have a garden area in there that my mother worked very diligently at. <laughs> I don't know if Paul's going to hire her after, but um, and you know, with the standards, there we needed additional parking with the five seats and. I don't know if the planning board sent you the packet or if you guys had the packet along with yeah, that. Or you did get the packet, okay. And it does outline the parking spots needed for the additional um, patio space. So um, you have a signed lease with the uh, Blue Point congregation. We're very neighborly, and you know, with our neighbors, we have a great um, rapport with all of our neighbors and. They frequent our uh, establishment, and we have a lot of people who walk to our establishment from Bailey's, from uh, Snowberry, from Jasper, from because we do have sidewalks along all along Pine Point Road. So I know that may be a concern with you know cars coming in and out or parking at um, the church, but with the um, sidewalks and the lighting that we have up front, um, it's safe. So that's, you know, we're looking to expand for those five tables. I think as we said before, I, with this type of miscellaneous appeal, what we need to go do is go through the special exceptions. So I'm going to go through those and ask you to answer them. It looks like you actually did submit um, the answers to them. That's great. I, do have, I, I just got back from vacation when I did it, so I don't know how coherent. <laughs> 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 it was on a different time zone <laughs> since I just turned 50. <clears throat> so A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. No, the outdoor seating, um, we are on public sewer, so uh, it shouldn't create any other undue sewer. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. You know, since with the sidewalk and um, the parking right next door, it is a, Bradford Road is a private road, so there's not a lot of traffic going down Bradford Road. Um, and Pine Point Road is, is the main thoroughfare, but sidewalks should be safe. See, the proposed use will not create 
public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. The venues attached to the building and their, their proper fire codes, when we opened, they reviewed them so they meet the standards. D, the proposed use will not create not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. No, the, you know, the patio was put in, it's a brick patio, so it's a, um, it's not a permanent patio, so it hasn't had any erosion. It's been there for five years. E, the proposed use will not, will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, Proximity to other structures and density of development. I think it's you know added. My our neighbors at the congregation, you know, they, they worked with their Rosa Rosa when we started to update and upgrade with all the flowers, and um, so I think it's it's actually beautifying the street. It's very pretty. <laughs> um, F if located in the shoreline zone. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. You know, I don't, I'm not sure if I should answer that or Paul, <laughs> since I no longer, I mean, certainly is he, uh, uh, we, you know, we have been, we haven't had any issues, so. I think at the time of the application, you were. Okay, yeah, then yes. Has sufficient right title or interest. Oh, she sold it yesterday. Okay, so she you closed. Yeah, he had, he uh, he had already had a, a purchase and sales agreement. In the US. Yeah. Either way, we're covered. And he was in all of the meetings that we had <coughs> with Brian and the planning board and was at the planning board meeting on Monday. H. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the board of appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. Yeah, the financial ability in meeting the standards. Yes. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. There, the hours are still going to be seasonal from four to five to nine, so they have to be late hours. I'd like to go back for a second here and just talk about the technical and financial ability because um, I'm a little worried here because you actually are not the owner as of today. Um, so I think maybe if we could understand a little bit about where the current owner is coming from so we can feel comfortable that he does have the financial ability, if you don't mind. Thank you. Just tell us your name. Pending the approval, we had set aside an escrow sufficient amount of funds to be able to uh, to correct any issues that would arrive to, in, in fact, make sure it wasn't in compliant and encoded there. My understanding is you already have another restaurant, so this is not something new to you? Mm, no. Okay. No. You have one other restaurant that you currently operate? Uh, this is two out of, this is uh, number four out of four, but I currently operate Fishbones Grill in Lewiston. We're current, we currently have a plan to be open from 3 to 9 on the weekdays and 9.30 on the weekends. Um, but I can assure you it's a restaurant only. I have no desire to do anything beyond just serving public food and drink. So what you're saying is that uh, conceptually it will be very similar to you know, what's current, what has been. That is that. correct, sir. No. The menu, of course, will be different. Slightly. Slightly. Not okay. much. Not much more. I understand. I was in the restaurant business for most of my career. I understand. I've been trying to get out for a long time. <laughs> and by the way, and I say thank you. Congratulations on your exit strategy. Well done. <laughs> you know what that means. I certainly do. In the packet, there are two different uh, lease agreements with the church. Which 
lease agreement is the correct one? The signed lease agreement? There should be a signed lease agreement? Okay. I think the first one was before we had the paperwork had to be submitted. Okay. And then there should be a signed lease agreement. Um, yeah, the one that we received in the package was signed. Okay. That's right. But that's the well, we received there's, both of them. There's one dated March 26. Yeah, that's it. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Now, that lease agreement, I have a concern with that lease agreement. It's only good for a year. Church doesn't renew it. What do you do? Shut down the patio? They told us, I mean, in my review with them, and they said we could reach out to them or call them if need be, um, that you know they, they just wanted to do it as a yearly lease, just so they could see how it goes, but they don't foresee any issues with it. Did the planning board talk about this? No. They I'll tell you, you know, I mean, we've got a problem in this town. We've got a restaurant on 114 that's got a parking problem. The the uh, vestry was there at the planning board meeting to review it. But oh. that's that's not my point. My point is the lease is for one year. So, so let me ask: you. the lease is not renewed. I think I, I mean maybe that, that's a question for Mr. Longstaff. Yes. In a year, is the town going to go back out there? Correct parking spaces, or is that a contingency that we can put on the approval of this appeal? The, the parking requirements are something that the planning board will need to look at and solidify as part of their site plan review. They didn't take a first crack at it during their advisory opinion. I can't. I can't help that. I don't know why they didn't. I don't know why it wasn't discussed. Perhaps they were satisfied with what they saw. I can't speak for them. They didn't put it in their opinion. As far as what happens after approval, they can put any kind of reasonable conditions on that approval that they want. They may wish for the applicant to submit annually as of April 1 or you know some reasonable date that they have renewed that, that parking requirement. Usually these things, what, what ends up happening is if it's if it's going to be a problem, it manifests itself in a complaint-driven enforcement action. Uh, all of a sudden, parking isn't happening at the church. Why not? Well, we didn't get our lease agreement done. Okay, then we're going to cut back your capacity. It gets handled that way. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be concerned about it. I'm just saying it's it's going to get dealt with one way or another. I just think it's an open and denied. Well, it's always going to be. If you don't have on-site parking on your lot that you own, it's always going to be. Absolutely, yeah. Because you can't, you can't predict what happens if that's never, if, if that isn't a church forever and ever. <laughs> what if another business buys it and they're not willing to share their parking? That's an issue. That'll have to be dealt with at that time. Does it impact the applicant right now? But the thing is, well, it does. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just saying that's your decision. It's only good for a year. Right now, it's only good for you. But it's pretty hard to get a longer term lease than that. Most most leases, I mean, I don't know, the second lease in here was at least for two years. Well, that, was that the sign one? No. <laughs> okay. Just wondering what was going on there. May I please follow up on that? Yes. All right. With these kind of leases, about it. With these kind of lease situations, okay. Uh, I have two questions here. First of all, uh, is the lease assignable? Yes. It is assignable. All right, so that, is, yeah, so that it's transferable to the new owner. Okay, so that's very important, these sorts of things. Uh, and, there, and there are no provisions in the current lease for renewing the lease. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Uh, so what normally happens in these kind of situations is that every year, you know, they have to go through it again and negotiate it. And, uh, you, know, you know, the question for Brian, just you know, process issue, could we put a contingency on here that as long as the lease is renewed each year, that, you know, we would feel a little favorable on this? I think it's a reasonable, I think it's a reasonable condition to place on it. I mean, it, it only makes sense, obviously. There's no parking. 
other other things would have to happen in order to use those tables. So um, either there's, there's parking adequate to accommodate the capacity of the restaurant, or the capacity of the restaurant gets reduced, um, and that can be done in a number of different ways. So if you wanted to place that condition on there that this approval is contingent upon renewal of an annual lease for parking or the creation of parking that's acceptable somewhere else. But there has to be adequate parking. I'd, I'd be happy for that provision. Because, I mean, the parking might not necessarily have to be with the church. It could be somewhere, you know, adjacent oh, yeah, with another lease my bus service. Or I don't know that there's that opportunity there, but, you know, that could happen. So I don't, I don't want to pin it down that it has to be at the church, but there has to be adequate approved on-site funding. I think that's a good way to try it. We put that in. The planning board definitely has to deal with it. Well, they're, they're going to have to deal with it anyway. So your approval... wouldn't necessarily... Yes, attention to detail. Yeah. Think about the, the fact that police is only good for a year. Yeah. Well, I, I, I definitely think that causes them you know, to deal with it. Exactly. Exactly. No, I, I think it's fair. I think it's a fair question. It's fair only because it's in the regulations. So we're not asking them for any more than what they're required to do. And that's going to be their their next challenge is making sure that they've met that with the planning board. They've demonstrated, I think, with you know, with a lease that the parking is there. How that how that gets handled year after year. Is, is a question mark, but yeah, it's there if the lease is there. So, yeah, first, I just add another comment. I personally don't think it's a big issue because when you're dealing with a church, it's a lot different than dealing with a big real estate company. You know, it's not it's the same as a you know, landlord tenant relationship, and the church may not be willing to go out more than a year at a time because things can change in the church and whatever. They just don't want to commit that far out. Uh, so I, I don't think it's a big issue. It can be resolved you know, on an annual basis. Um, I did, just for clarification, uh, presently the patio is approved for a waiting area, a waiting area, a cocktail area, but with the additional seating for, for food service was triggered the requirement additional parking. So in a year's time, I wouldn't necessarily lose use of the patio. I would lose use of the patio for dinner service out there. So I, I think the objective is, you know, for the church and their concerns, my job is to make sure I'm a good neighbor, uh, certainly. And, and I think uh, their reservations, if there were any, were they're originally making the address with Sheila Next year, they'll be making the address with me. Um, my job is to assure them that we're meeting all the requirements that they've, they've stated in their lease. And, and I, 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 I think that's fair. I would have loved to have a long term lease for sure. But you know, given the circumstances, I'm from out of town, scary. But my job is to come in and just make sure that we're meeting the objectives, which I feel pretty confident in. requirements is that the applicant has sufficient right title or interest in this site for the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Zoning board is a very technical sort of thing. We have to look at it in black and white. What's concerning me at this exact moment before we open it to the public and the board starts discussing all these issues and voting on it is the application is submitted by someone as of today who does not own or have any interest in the property. Everything has been transferred to you as of yesterday. Um, very disconcerting. I don't see anyone here who's giving any complaints, but our job here is to make sure that we follow all these rules and guidelines down to a T. If someone was going to sue the town, we would be we would be granting this appeal right now to someone who does not actually own the property. And I'm sort of, I think at this point, really looking to my board here to get some feedback. Um, I have no issues with this. I have been to Pine Point Grill. I know what it is. I, People park at the church. There's never been an issue there. I'm looking at this very technical issue that the person who's presenting tonight does not have title. Um, it's a 
a little concerning. I would love some feedback. May I start? Yes, please. Uh, I think that's a great point that you're making. Uh, well, right. I would also counter that by saying that it's a, it's a process issue in terms of timing. Okay. It, and, and, and it was a transaction that was in the works. Okay. It's a technical issue. All right. Uh, I just don't see it as being material because it's, you know, clearly the, the transaction's already occurred. And we're really looking at an application that was filed some time ago before all the, the other parts of it were done. And the fact that they did it a day ahead of time, I don't see that as being a big uh, problem as far as proving this going forward. I know in the past we've had potential yeah. buyers yeah. submit applications saying that this whole sale is, you know, I'm presenting this, here's my purchase and sale, I'm under contract in the buyer. And I think, again, you kind of circle around to receiving an application from someone who's run a very successful business on Point One Grill, all the neighbors love her, so she's submitting an application going on her. This application was actually not filled out by the person who is going to be owning and operating this facility who we are saying, okay, you have the approval. Um, again, I'm just looking for feedback here about the technicalities regarding that. I think you don't have to turn that much concern about it. Uh, but our look is that they've got a written contract between the two of them that they Executed about yesterday, which should be become part of our packet. If we had that, I think that that would cover the fact that we have one party presenting it and the other party taking control of it. I don't see it being a, a problem as long as we document it have document, documentation to support them. I understand. Short chair, where you're coming from. Um, I do, at this time, I do not see our personal feel that there's, that there should be much concern for this. Should we properly document this? Um, looking at the existing packet that was provided to us at the time it was signed, the uh, applicant did have the sufficient right title. This, as uh, the board member shared, does come down to time. I was actually going through the packet. I, I must have lost my mind. I thought there was a copy of the deed at the time of submittal, but I don't even see that on the original. <laughs> so I'm standing here feeling a little embarrassed that there was no right title or interest demonstrated with the application, although we all know Sheila owned it. Um, I don't even have that in there, so I'm a little bit. Um, I thought so too. And I, I just went through everything, and unless it somehow fell out of there, I don't have it in that packet. Uh, did anybody ever see in their packets a copy of a deed? Yeah, everything seemed to focus on the lease and the parking, and there was some other stuff that maybe got left out. But I, I had no no qualms because we knew knew full well that she uh, we had tax bills, tax records, everything uh, that you know she was the owner. Now, it would have been, I guess, maybe appropriate for you to have brought a document with you showing that the ownership technically transferred to Paul mm -hmm. as a... I have one of the truck and a package that I have. So I'm, I'm happy If anybody them. wants to see something like that, if... No. Mr. Suggestion. Sure. Okay. We are not going to... Uh, if we approve this, okay, assuming we were to approve this tonight, okay. We're not actually going to do the final vote on it until the next meeting. If the applicant or the owner, Larry, were to provide the deed, uh, and that could be attached to the to the uh, paperwork for our next meeting, you know, wouldn't that uh, be sufficient?
Okay, I'm well, basically maybe we'll try to be able to find out. Well, and I mean, we, we do have a lease here which does show us the ownership at the time, which is Sheila. And so, I mean, to me, that shows that she had ownership at the time of the application. We can make, we can make our approval to put your car the same way. Let's go through this thing and do it. Okay, so I'm gonna at this time if the board doesn't have any more questions, I'm gonna open it up to the public. Anyone any questions, concerns, comments? Brian, did you receive any emails or phone calls? Sanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. No negative impact. I did not see any concerns. They're not really doing anything, right? They're not doing anything. No. Other than putting a couple of things up. Right, they already have the patio there. They're just trying to expand the service that they are providing out there, which will not create any sort of unsanitary or unhealthy conditions. All in favor of A being met. Either proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Favor of D being that. 
A, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. No concerns? It will be compatible with its existing use? Is it, is it completely surrounded by shrubs and trees? It's a garden. It's a seasonal garden that will come up in it um, okay. from the street, so you really don't see much of it. Okay. And then there's also a fence on the parking side that... Um, I that helps here. All in favor of E being met? E. Sorry. E. Sorry. All in favor of E being met? Or D. Or both. F. If located in the shoreland zone. Property is not in the shoreland zone. All in favor? Town verifies. Town verifies. G. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Uh, with the condition of the time we uh, provided before next meeting. Agreed. No additional comment. No ticky, no surety. I think we, we discussed this a little bit at length before and I think we're okay moving forward in regards to this contingency as long as you know the, the new deed is submitted. All in favor of G being met. <clears throat> H, the applicant has a technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Yes. This is this court business, no concerns. No change in Correct. The new owner did come up tonight and present that he did have other businesses and he's run restaurants before in the past. So this is nothing new. All in favor of H being met. Ah, the proposed use would be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Yes, it will. Sounds as if they'll be run somewhere so how it has been in the past. Perhaps this later on um, concern about signage, uh, or posted signage may be applicable. What were we talking about? Aye. Aye. I thought we just voted on that. We shouldn't be. If they're serving drinks out there now. Right, and I think Mr. Longstaff has told us that, I mean, as long as he's known that there's it's always been a restaurant that's been operating out of there, it's pretty well known that it's been that use for as long as anyone can remember. All in favor of I being met. Madam Chair, I want to just mention one thing. On the uh, advisory opinion uh, from the Planning Board, they did suggest uh, that there be some discussion on exploring some seasonal signage between Pine Point Grill and the Blue Point Congregational Church during hours of operation, whether that could be temporary movable signs placed on a, uh, a cone, perhaps in the parking lot, say, reserved for uh, Pine Point Grill Park, just so that it was demonstrated that you had that there, uh, and conversely, that would go away during church services or anymore, something that nature. I'm not exactly sure what they felt would, would be appropriate, but they did suggest that a discussion occur, and I don't know if that's the board's uh, desire here tonight to, to do that or not. I know you're you're looking at placing a condition, you know, regarding parking on an approval if you were going to approve it. But the planning board do that. <laughs> okay, and that's fair too. Uh, uh, I would further state that that's really between the uh, landlord and the tenant. Okay. For them to work out an amicable, reasonable uh, solution of signage, so that's, that's between. I don't think we should get into that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I 
agree. I think you're gonna you're a new neighbor. You're gonna be a good neighbor. I think you guys will work together, and I don't think it'll be a problem. And if it is, people will know. I don't know if people had any concerns about contingencies in regards to patios and parking and things like that. Um, motion to approve. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2658 with the following conditions. Uh, you guys are going to help to help me with uh, the parking one. But the one condition would be the of the sign bill of sale between the two parties and a copy of the uh, In other words, proof of title, right title. Right. sort of works when a contingency is placed. Maybe, Brian, you could help me out with that. Well, I mean, under most circumstances, place on that, should for some reason that not happen, then that gives us ammunition then to go in and say, okay, no longer have, not that we want to do that, but if, if we had to, we could say, if you've broken one of the conditions of your approval, Mr. Landry, you can no longer have full service dining at these outside seats. But it, it it just it's a condition. It's it's just like uh, a condition on a permit or any other type of approval. It if you don't meet that, then you no longer get the approval. You can do whatever you want. Can I ask you, Ms. Maselli, what what was what would happen before if there was a wedding on a Saturday night and you were serving? I'm, I'm trying to understand. I understand why you're doing the lease, but how was it before you had the lease? I, I, I knew. I mean, we were they worked in our parking lot. It was just very open. I guess mm -hmm. we did the lease because of the standards that we want to have the outdoor seating. Right. So the outdoor um, service. You know, it wasn't always a wait area. So the reason we're going after the parking is to meet the standards for the town of Scarborough. But we, you know, shared each other's parking lots when they had a bazaar. They're open during, we're open at night, they're open during the day, so it would never be a conflict. Usually, and then maybe once there was a conflict, and they would put a cone out saying wedding only, and then, you know, people would park in other areas. You know, they may park across the street, the tennis courts are across the street, and there's 10 or 12 parking spots over there, so they would park across the street. Mm -hmm. And then we do have on Bradford Road, um, there's a lot of parking on Bradford Road, and then the back of the restaurant, there's a very large area of um, grass area that people would park on as well. That was actually one of my my questions is why not develop parking in the grass area out back? Is that maybe something you'd be looking at in the future? The, the lease for the church was to accommodate the current needs by my intention is to explore the back lot. It seems like the sad part is if you were to do that you'd have to be back here in front of the board oh, asking for more market crazy <laughs> Certainly, it gives us 
and that kind of goes to, to Dave's point about we don't want to put too fine a point on the approval as long as they can provide parking in another acceptable way. You know, yeah. that's... And I don't, know, I don't know if it's the zoning board's job to regulate the implementation of what it's required for a restaurant to operate every year. Um, I'm a little hesitant to put a contingency, I'm telling the board, in regards to parking. Um, I think if he wants to operate and have that many tables, he needs to have that many tables to parking. And... Well, I just think it should be addressed. When we address it, it should really be addressed by the planning board. And, and I expect it will be addressed by the planning board. And, and just as an aside to you, whether or not you place that condition on this approval, the planning board's site plan amendment will require that parking to be there. So if for any reason, well, let's just say that a certain number of spots were approved on the lot and all of a sudden the owner decided to sell the sell that part of the lot and those spots went away, then he'd be in violation of the site plan approval too. So there, there's a number of ways that we have a check, check and balance on this for enforcement purposes. We hope it never comes to that and it shouldn't. And I'm sure Mr. Landry doesn't intend for that to happen. So, but should it happen, there are a number of safeguards that we can fall back on, even if you don't place a condition on your approval. Didn't happen. Well, and again, we didn't even have a say. In, well, the, the board didn't even have a say in that, and that's a police. That's really a police issue because they're parking in the in the, in the right of way. So that we're not here to talk about that. My inclination is to let let the towns, other departments, deal with the licensing requirements that restaurants need. But you started to have a motion on the on the table. Uh, do you want to finish that motion and then see if it gets a second? If not, then you can go back and revise the motion. I don't know what the motion is. We're gonna have to start over. <laughs> well, the motion was still approved with the follow up. One being that they provide a uh, proof of right title and interest. Right title and interest. And then and you wanted to finish that by saying proof of adequate parking. Is that correct? Or am I putting proof? We're, right. Would you guys agree with that? Proof of adequate parking? The question is when am I second that? But that's the process. Well, that's the process I think that we need to go through. Uh, the motion gets made. made. If it doesn't get second, the motion dies. And then another, another motion can be made without those conditions or whatever. Well, Correct. Maybe what we should do is vote out the conditions by, by themselves. Because the two conditions have nothing to do with each other. That's, that's true. Yeah. Right. So condition well, you, one, you condition you one is the right the motion. Yeah. Condition one would be the right the title. And then condition two would be what would you guys say? Adequate parking? Proof of adequate parking? Well, that's how the one is being raised. Or do we just leave it up to the planning? It's all right with me to leave it up to the planning board. Well, we can vote on it and see what happens. Okay. Right. So somebody needs to, you know, if you want to go ahead and make a motion. Do we have a second to Ed's motion? Okay, the first motion was, we're doing them one at a time. Well, I think just no. to keep it simple, well, no. I think let's just take the motion with two conditions, condition one, condition two, and then put that out for a second. Is there a second on that motion with those two conditions? Hearing no second, would anyone care to amend the motion? And then, and then see if there's a second to that. Take our condition two. Just condition one. I'll second that. <laughs> that motion gets a second. All in favor? Is there what? Is there, was there any discussion on that? No. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Unanimous? Yeah. Okay. So strike condition two. Condition one stays, the motion passes four to nothing. Okay, so your appeal is passed with the condition that you produce the purchase and sale, the deed, some sort of proof of ownership. And where do we submit that to? Uh, you can drop it at the office because 
at the next at our next meeting here, we will take a written decision. Your your approval is good as of tonight, but we have to, for the record, vote on a written decision. So we have a written decision in the record that adequately addresses all these issues. Just to refer any further scrutiny. That gets done at the next meeting. So as long as I have it by the next meeting, I'll present that to the board with that written condition. And that way they'll that that will satisfy that. Will that you way. require uh, a copy of our title showing possession prior to the um, or just just I think at that point we're, we're gonna to want to see the, the transaction the transfer of ownership to you. Okay. Yeah. Because that will state that she she had ownership and she transferred it to you. Absolutely. So anything that adequately shows that that ownership now that right title and interest has been passed to you. Okay. So I don't know if the deeds will be all drawn up and ready at that point if they're already done. Or, I said you put a copy yesterday. Yeah. So. Yeah. Does that sound clear? I get that. I get that. Sure. Okay. Forever hopeful that the weather is going to clear. <laughs> yeah, we use it. Uh, I've got a patio back in Wilson that's been waiting for use, so we'll see how it works. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. We look forward, forward to visiting you. I'm sorry. We look forward to visiting you. Oh, I hope so. so. I hope so. Should be fine. Should be fine. So the next step for us would be: Do we go back to planning board? Is you will. You will have to go back to planning board for a site plan. Because we gave you the, the approval to expand that service. It's just a formality at this point. I doubt they'll have any major issues, but they will want to address the parking thing for sure. So it, it's basically, uh, you may want to just contact Jamel. Uh, so you already get your advisory opinion. Now you just want to get back on their agenda for a quick approval of the site plan for the next step. Is that a site plan that will provide? Yeah. So is it like the overview that I gave with the Yeah, I think, is? I think that that's probably going to be accurate. I don't really, I shouldn't really say because I'm not involved okay, in your so process. It's I, a Jamel, Jamel J question. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you may have a tough time reaching them over the next week because they're all at a planning convention in California, but they may, may be able to address it by email. Okay. Okay. I'm not expecting to be able to get out there and start anything. Yeah. It, it may not, I'm not, I'm not sure that it's necessary to do the whole thing. I think there was a site plan on the file. It might just be a matter of taking that and amending. I'll reach out to the yeah. to do that one. Yeah. Thank you. decision for the CMP is going to be tabled until next meeting, is that correct? That never was really addressed as part of the agenda today. And the approval of the minutes from March 13th, I guess, had to also be tabled because we only had three votes uh, for that. Second. All in favor? 